let's pretend that you're a student and this is one of the assignments that your teacher has given you to complete in Canvas. What are you supposed to do? It's kind of hard to tell. Obviously, I need to download this PDF, but when I pull up the PDF, I can't type on it. If I go to submit, it's going to give me a text box or a place to upload a file, but as a student, I'm going to be super confused about what the teacher wants me to do. So what do I do? I really have two choices. One, I can email the teacher and ask for directions, or I can just choose not to do it because I don't understand what the teacher wants me to do. This is what we don't want to happen in Canvas. So let's talk about adding directions to your assignments so that students know exactly what they need to do. So think about if I was giving this assignment in class, I wouldn't just hand students the worksheet. I would talk them through it. We would maybe do the first example together. I would read the directions to them. So those are the kind of things that you also need to include on Canvas. So I'm going to actually move my file down and I'm going to put the directions at the top. So students have to see them first before they even get to the PDF. So I'm going to think about what I would need to tell students. So obviously I'm going to need students to download the file. So I'm going to tell them that. I'm also going to click on this link and link option. I'm going to change the name of the worksheet to match what I'm calling it here and make it something easy for students to see. So now it matches persuasive language worksheet, persuasive language worksheet. This doesn't actually change the name of the file, it just changes what it's saying here. Then I'm going to need to decide what I need for them to do and I'm going to list the directions in order. One thing that I find that helps my students is I number the list. So that way when they're telling me they don't understand the directions, I can say, what number are you stuck at? Which forces them to go back and look at the directions and figure out, oh, I'm stuck at number two or number three or whatever. So the second thing is on this worksheet, I need them to read the actual excerpt from this speech. So I'm going to say that. And then I'm going to think about in class, if we were going to read this speech, I would tell them to listen for rhetorical moves because that's what this worksheet is all about and persuasive language. So I'm going to tell them that. I would consider that to be teacher talk. The next thing is really I need them to complete the worksheet but they can't actually complete the worksheet because it's a PDF. So that means they can't edit it. Now there are a million different ways you can have your students do this. My suggestion is that you pick one way, you keep it simple, and you use that way all the time. Instead of giving students many, many options, which can sometimes overwhelm them, or giving them a super complicated way that you want them to do this. You could make a digital worksheet using Google Slides or something like that. But if I want to keep it super simple, I'm just going to tell students to put their answer in the text box. But the text box doesn't actually appear on Canvas until students hit the submit button, which is a little bit confusing for them. So I'm going to say, when you are ready to start completing the worksheet, come back to Canvas and click the submit button. A text box will appear for you to type in. So now they know exactly what they need to click. Now if I look at this worksheet, I'm going to see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say number your answers from 1 to 7. So I'm telling them exactly how I want them to type their answers. Make sure to type the technique being used, the example, 
And then some more teacher talk. Like in class, I would say the example is going to be a quote from the speech. And then the effect of the example. And more teacher talk. So again, try to think about if you were in class, what exactly you would tell students. What would you do? So I'm going to now say, for example, I'm going to give students the answer to number one. So if they actually read the directions, they're getting rewarded for that, and they have something to compare all of their other answers to. And I'm going to type it exactly how I want my students to type their answers. I'm even going to tell them on the directions for number four, the answer to number one is provided below. Use this example to structure your answers. Now, once they have finished, they also need directions about how to submit. I'm going to say when you're finished with your work and ready to submit, you need to hit the submit assignment button. Now, there's something else I can do here that will be very helpful. So right now I'm saying download the PDF below. I'm actually going to copy it and move it here. So students can just click on it there. Then you need to read over your directions and see if there's anything else that you think you may need to tell students. My suggestion is that you put yourself in the student's shoes. What questions do you think they might have? Something that when I read back over this, I may think, do they know where to look to find help with their work? So I'm going to tell them, I'm going to add a number five here and say, if you need help with this worksheet, then make sure to use your notes and examples from pages 18, 19, and 20 of your digital interactive notebook. And what this does is it goes ahead and tells them where to go if they need extra help. So you also don't have them emailing to ask you about this. I'm also going to make sure that down here in my assignment stuff that I remove any other options I don't want them to use. I don't want students to upload a file of this worksheet because I'm having them type in the text box. So I'm going to remove that option because, I, again, I want to limit it. And then, of course, I would need to add due dates and opening dates and closing dates. Another thing I would suggest is that you make your directions big. I actually use heading three. And you may say, that's really big. Yep, but I want it to yell at them that here are the directions. Now, you may say, that took a super long time for you to type out those directions. And I would agree. However, what you're going to start to notice is if you do a lot of assignments similar ways, you can copy and paste these directions and then just change whatever you need to change. So the next time I do this, I may just need to change the numbers or just the directions for like number four and then change the name of the excerpt or whatever. The directions pretty much for number three and number six are always going to be the same. So you can use copying and pasting to save yourself some time. Also, I would argue that you spending the time right now to type out really good detailed directions with an example and some teacher talk will save you time later from answering student emails. I don't really receive a ton of emails from students about how to do the work. The only questions that I really get from students are about the content of the work. So they're asking me about rule of three as opposed to how do you want me to turn in this assignment. And that saves me a lot of time in the long run. So even though it may take you some more time to type up directions, it will save you time in the long run. So now I'm going to hit save. And let's look 
Now, if you were a student, you know exactly what you need to do. Now, you may say, this almost looks like too much information. And I would argue that I would rather give them too much information than not give them enough. This helps students know what to do. It also can help a parent who's maybe trying to help a student know what to do. And if a student emails you and says, I don't know how to do this work, you can say, which part of the directions are you having trouble with? And a lot of times that will just redirect them back to the directions and they will solve their own questions.